So cars on the warm-up lap now for this 15-lap second race of the weekend. Reverse top 10 is in play, but James, here's the track. 3.12 kilometres, and as you can see on the graphic, that's why we caught the paperclip. Yeah, that's exactly right, Noons. And, of course, all the talk this year has been about the track being resurfaced. Some of the uh, characteristic bumps into Turn 1 and 3 have gone, but still quite bumpy at Turns 1 and 2. Fantastic passing opportunities into Turn 3 and 6. Here's our pole man, Andrew Jones, in the Kitten Commodore for Brad Jones Racing. Remember, he won this corresponding race last year, but... In it very was, different conditions. I was going to say, it was very, very wet. He'll start alongside David Russell. They had an engine misfire in that car in race one. They've changed the motor for this one. Luke Yildon doing a great job in that BF Falcon from Matthew White's team. Chas Mostert, race one winner. He goes back to 10th. Marcus Sukanovic, unlucky. Didn't quite get the inversion. Drew Russell, 16th. The older model BF Ford from the Brad Jones Racing Team. There's Tim Blanchard, back to 19th after that drama in race one. Elliot Barber next. Morgan Haber makes his debut driving one of the Matthew White cars. Adam Wallace back from South Australia. Then Brett Stewart. Michael Hector in just his second year in the sport. Nandy Kiss and Aaron McGill ran out the field. But Luke Yulden is in pit lane. We're hearing on the, the warm-up lap. Green flag. There was Green a drive flag. line issue with that car. So that's why that spot on the grid is vacant on the third row. So race two, Jones v Russell. Waters and Dale Wood on row two. And watch for the fast guys coming from the middle of the pack, trying to work their way through. Remember, it's a half points race, but they don't put in half the effort. They really run hard in this one. Great start by David Russell. Always gets off the line well, and he leads the field through turn one. So Andy Jones, you'll be disappointed that he didn't quite get the start that he was hoping for. Paul Morris there in the Barocca Commodore, trying to go around the outside of turn two. But Russell already has a nice handy lead heading into turn three. Already McLaughlin's making moves. This is tight on board with Rodney Jane in the Bob JT Marts Ford. Hard under brakes, turn three, cold tyres, cold brains, trying to find some rhythm. Oh, Perkett and Dale Wood get together. So Perkett trying to go up the inside. A little bit of a rub there for Wood. And he stays in front, actually. So Perkett and that co-tyre Commodore, he'll be trying to move forward as quickly as he can. Oh, again, up the inside of Wood. Wood gives him a bit of room. Pye and Morris having a bit of a rub on the exit of turn four. And they all managed to get through relatively safely and clean. So end of lap one, David Russell just starting to clear away this Dreamtime Racing operation. New at the start of the year, it's essentially an offshoot from Kelly Racing, but run from a different workshop in Melbourne. Back on board with Rodney Jane. Finished 15th in race one. Moster down the inside on Percat. Not quite in the gap. Oh, close, close, but the oh, former... this isn't over with, Nunes. No, oh, there's a rattle on the bumper there, and he gives him a little shove. That's a bit naughty. Percat will be unhappy with that. Moster into the back of him, right where the car's unloaded through turn two. So side by side, they go into turn three. Moster, though, he'll be able to grab position on Percat. Just behind Scott Pye. The Monster Commodore lunging Paul Morris. They had a little bit of a rub. Oh, and Percat and Mostert, they're still going at it. This is brewing side by side to four. Nick can't really do anything out there. He's trying to switch it back and get it up the inside for turn five. So this moves on if he can get up the inside. Oh. So he's got a bit of overlap. No, he's not in there. He's not in there, but he's unloaded Mostert. And around goes the FPR forward. That was brewing. You could see that coming a mile away. And that, and that was something that was pointed out at the driver's briefing. Oh, Perkat's got a problem. He's in so the pits. Perkat in pit lane. No doubt left front damage on the co-tire Commodore. But that was pointed out that you've really got to be in there to be any chance of a move at turn five. And I suspect that damage on Perkat car. So he's definitely got a left front puncture. It looked like they had contact. Him and Mostert coming off turn three. And that's probably where that damage has occurred. Hector now is the reason why we're exactly. under safety car. Yeah, this happened just before that contact. So Michael Hector, one of the three Novocastrian Motorsport Fords, has just locked it up big time at turn three. Lucky not to wipe out Brett Stewart. He's, but here we go, Nunes. He's had a couple of close calls this weekend, Brett Stewart. But tell me about the move here. Percat, in my mind, there's, he's just not in. Yeah, but as you rightly said, Noons, that's something that is always discussed in driver's briefing here at Queensland Raceway. Chaz would have known that Nick was there and probably should have given him a bit more room. 
But in the That's end, just my opinion on the matter. But Melstead ends up off the road. Perkett's got a damaged car, so there's no winners at all. No, exactly Perkett, right. He will resume. He's down the back of the field, so he and Mostert will have to fight their way through. More action when we come back. Getting back to racing, it is race two, round four in the Dunlop Series for V8 Supercars at Queensland Raceway, and it's David Russell who leads us back to the control line, then Andrew Jones, then Ash Walsh, then Scott McLaughlin, and down the tail of the field, Chaz Mostert is 23rd and needs to fight back, because remember, the combined race one and two results give you the grid for race three, so there's, there's still something to gain. And even though this reverse grid race is only half points, just have a look at Scott McLaughlin there, sitting in fourth. He's kept out of trouble. Having a look up the inside of his older car, Ash Walsh into turn three. He's going to be able to get this job done, so slips into third. He's just keeping his nose nice and clean, staying out of trouble. And we've already seen Perkett and Mostert coming together. Scott McLaughlin. Oh, oh. More drama. Daniel Gillison facing in the wrong direction. That's the teammate to Ash Walsh from the Matt Stone Racing Squad with their ex. Stone Brothers Falcons, replay with Rodney Jane. Now he's down the inside here, bang, ouch. Yeah, so Jane just trying to follow Blanchard through there and unfortunately no room. Gillison just turned across on him. One of those 50-50 ones, really. Luke Hilden is out. The MW Motorsport, the global welding Ford is in pit lane with a driveline issue that occurred on the warm-up lap. So he's a spectator for race two. That's a shame because He's done a great job with that older model car. He's leading the Privateers Cup, which is the fight within the fight for the teams and cars that aren't linked to the main game teams. But David Russell, under pressure here from Andrew Jones, but has had some good runs lately. Had a, a race win in the Australian GT Championship in a Lamborghini, but he's just lost the lead here. Jones is down the inside, and McLaughlin is just chipping his way through. He's up to second within five laps. He's doing a great job, McLaughlin. And like we've touched on before, he's staying out of trouble. He's doing what he needs to do. Oh, having, having a big look up the inside of Andy Jones. Thinks better of it in the turn four that time by. But he's doing what he needs to do to put together this championship. There's, he's been consistent all year. He's won races. He's won rounds. He's doing a fantastic job. Up the inside now to Andy Jones. Oh! oh it's on. It's has close. to on the kitten Commodore there. He's got to be careful here. He gives him some room. That's good stuff. But the thing that he hasn't done, James, he still hasn't got a pole, but we've had to keep reminding him there's no points for pole. But there is right here. There's a touch in a turn one. Jones was trying to get back down the inside. McLaughlin, I reckon, was slowing a little just to cover the line and stop the switchback manoeuvre, but he's got a rubbing left rear tyre, and he might have just brought himself undone. And all that hard work he'd done to get in the lead, he's now back in fourth. So Andy Jones probably gave him a bit of a rub he wasn't happy with the trip and he got a turn six, but look at young Cam Waters up the inside as well. And Dale uh, Wood, who goes for the pair of oh, them. Oh, this is getting messy, Nunes. Oh, this is tight. This is on. This is this is Dunlop Series racing at its best. You've got a mixture of experienced drivers, young guys, guys in between, different equipment from different teams. It really makes the Dunlop Series exciting to watch. And Waters is having a career best weekend. Great he lunges Dale Wood there and moves on forward. They've made a change this weekend. Tony Dow, the head of engineering at Kelly Racing, is race engineering Cameron this weekend. They've started him slowly throughout the weekend. He's coming on strong now. They've really got him in a great groove in that X Kelly Racing Commodore. But have a look at this. Wood, Medecki, Pye, Morris. It's a rumble. On board now with George Medecki. So him and Scott Pyle having a bit of a rub through turn six. The dude, Paul Morris, up the inside in that Barocca machine. Marcus Akanovic, he's in the thick of the action as well. So too, Tim Blanchard fighting his way through the field from 19th. Remember too that Morris was the runner-up in this round at this track last year. He's done so many laps. Two car number, triple two, for a driving infringement. The penalty is a drive-through penalty. Confirm black flag, drive-through penalty for car number, triple two. That's Paul Taylor in race control. Nick Perkett will be called to pit lane to serve that penalty for the contact with Chaz Mostert. Back on board with George Medeke sitting position eight in the Cytec Ford, finished 13th in race one. And that's one of the ex-team Vodafone 888 Fords from a few years ago, former Jamie Winkup championship winning 
Morris Pine out. And Bathurst winning car as well. Okay, mate, just be patient working through this deck group. You can do it. You've got eight laps to go. You're looking well for points. Keep it up. You're doing a good job. So that's the voice of Dave Patterson speaking to Chas Mostert. Obviously, just trying to talk Chas through it. He'd be a bit wound up after that contact with Perkett early in the race. He's just working his way back through the field. And that's really what these young drivers need. Somebody like a Dave Patterson who has plenty of experience engineering V8 supercars, just talking Chaz through it, keeping him calm and keeping him steady. There's the leaders. Looks like that tyre rub that we saw on McLaughlin after a bit of a rub with Andy Jones has gone away, so thankfully that's not going to hurt him too much. Zikanovic and Bedecki, they're going at it now. Couple of, turn four. couple of former Ute boys, a former champion oh, in Zucanovic who inside. cops a whack. Medici's wide and the Monster Commodore picks up two spots. There's Mostert. He's on the fight back trail. He was as low as 23rd when we restarted this race. He's already worked his way up to 12th, trying to take 11th. And in fact, that's what he's done. And there's no doubt that safety car has really helped Chaz because it's allowed him to get back a bit of that track position that he lost with that initial contact with Perkat. And now he's just trying to get as many points as he can for the third and final race. Andrew Jones in the Kitten Commodore. This is one of the ex-Holden Racing Team Commodores from when VEs originally came into the V8 Supercars Championship. A lot of deals being done behind the scenes with all of the cars from the current main championship no longer eligible next year for the main game, so they'll all come and play in the Dunlop series. But Jones is under the gun at the moment. David Russell has got some good pace, and Jones has said with this car, just burning up the rear tyres a little bit faster than usual here at Queensland Raceway this weekend. So getting in the back half of the race, David Russell starting to come on strong down the gap at turn four. Got it done, he leads. Great move up the inside. Not usually the easiest spot to pass here at turn three. But uh, Russell certainly up the inside. Ash Walsh doing a great job in third. This is, of course, his local test track, so uh, he knows this place back to front. And Scott McLaughlin fighting his way after that little moment he had a few laps back. He's back to fourth. And McLaughlin actually tested Walsh's car at a, a pre-round test here at QR. It's his old Fujitsu Ford. It's the same one we saw in the show opener that stalled on the grid here a couple of years ago. But he's zeroing in. He's pieced together this championship really, really well. He's gone when he has to go. He's conceded what he's had to concede. He's played a smart game, and it's only seven rounds. It's half the length of the main V8 series, so you don't have the time to really work your way back from a bad round. No, you're exactly right, dude. I've got to say, though, I'm really impressed with young Cameron Waters sitting there in fifth at the moment. This is by far his oh, best showing. Walsh. Oh, Walsh gives Andy Jones a tap up the back. And look at McLaughlin. He says, thank you very much. Slips past Walsh, and he's going to have a, a crack at Andy Jones, I'm sure, into turn four. Tries to go around the outside. Not really the place to be. But just back on Cam Waters, I think he's doing a fantastic job. Obviously, we saw him in the Shannon's Supercar Showdown last year. Won that. Got the chance to drive at Bathurst. But this weekend, it's been by far his best showing in the Dunlop Series. McLaughlin now up the inside of Andy Jones. And Ash Walsh is going to try and follow him through. And closing in on them all is Dale Wood in the GB galvanising Greg Murphy Racing Commodore. He's had a very solid start to the weekend. Seventh in race one. And he's going with the leaders. It's race two of the Dunlop Series from Queensland Raceway. David Russell leads the way. He hasn't had a win since 2010. Can he get it done? We'll find out after the break. Andrew Jones defending from Cameron Waters. Welcome back to Queensland Raceway. Race two, round four in the Dunlop Series for V8 Supercars. And the 18-year-old is on the charge. He's just put a move on a former main game regular. It's like he's been around for years. There's a great pass by Waters up the inside at turn six. So Walsh now, he's going to get a run on Andy Jones. Bit of loose body work on the uh, back of the kitten Commodore there. So hopefully the officials um, uh, satisfied that that's not going to be too much of a drama. Dale Wood now up the inside. So Andy Jones is really coming under attack. There's Russell, the leader. McLaughlin second. Waters next. Then Walsh then Wood, then Jones, then Pye, then Morris, then Chaz Mostert. The FBR Falcon has come from 23rd after that run off the road from the contact with Nick Perkat. He is carving his way through. He's got by Morris. 
and he's got a few laps up his sleeve. He could get a few more. He's done a great job to fight back up. Now into eighth, and he's got three laps to go, so I'm tipping his march is not over yet. Out front, David Russell is in control of this race. There's Tim Blanchard. He's been on the fight back trail too. Don't forget, he started 19th on the grid, so he's got to 10th, which is a good fight back, but that's an ex-Fort Performance Racing Ford from the Matthew White team and would have expected more from him so far this year. Mostert, though, he's got another spot. He's through to seventh. Jones, though, not done with yet the old over and under move on the exit of turn six, but the FPR Ford has got too much. Too much drive off the final corner there for Mostert, so even though he ran it in slightly deep into turn six up the inside of Andy Jones, he had enough power down coming off the final corner to pull that pass off. Waters now and Walsh. I think this battle's about to get a little bit more interesting, but look at the drive off turn two for young Cam Waters. Last year's Formula Ford champion. In his first year in the Dunlop series, he raced at the Sandown round last year. And of course, he co-drove with Grant Denyer in the Shannon's Commodore at Bathurst. Talk about a baptism of fire, that one was, but he was all the better for the experience. And of course, a, a new field of hopefuls on that show. This year, looking to get a gig at Bathurst. He locks the left front. And Walsh was coming anyway, no matter what happened with the Dreamtime Commodore. He moves through to third and has done a really good job. Older model car, smaller team. A link to Stone Brothers via Matt Stone, who's Jim Stone's son. But older model cars up against much newer cars and doing a good job. He is doing a great job. Obviously, like we touched on, this is his test track. But that car of Walsh's looks really strong under brakes. That's where he's making all his time at the moment, from what I can see. And certainly, you know, Cam Waters' car looks like it's very strong coming off the corners. Scott Pye, Monster Commodore, we'll see him co-drive with T uh, Taz Douglas in the Isolate car at Sandown and Bathurst. And although they're both triple eight cars, he said they're completely different. The brake master cylinder, the steering feels lighter. It's not as easy as it sounds, getting more miles in the Enduros going from car to car. Waters, though, slowing down the back straight. Uh, so that's disappointing for Waters because he's been doing such a great job. Oh, lost it into the back of him. Go to reserve. Into turn three. Sounds like that might have had a bit of a cough on the fuel. They've just asked him to go to reserve. And it looks like it's running fine now. So uh, that's disappointing if that's the case. Because in a development series race, you really shouldn't have to be worrying about going to reserve fuel pumps. Lost it, trying to work away on Dale Wood. I just had a memory throwback to a couple of years ago. I seem to remember a certain Jay Moffat having a similar problem. Now, the problem was, Noons, we couldn't go to reserves. We just ran out of fuel. <laughs> Mostert, he's running out of laps, but he's working his way through. Wood gets a little bit of a, a sideways run off turn six, but Russell and McLaughlin, they have been the men to beat in this race. Don't forget, too, they get two sets of tyres for qualifying in the three races, so what you'll generally find is guys are using their race one tyres and saving up the other set for the final race, race three. Yeah, certainly the, the front guys most likely do that option. Uh, use their uh, save their best tyres for the last race. But say somebody like Dave Russell, he was starting on the front row, so he might have used his better tyres to try and get a race win for this second race. But uh, hasn't this race been a ripper? We haven't seen too much carry on. Probably just Mostert and uh, and Perkett, you know, uh, th that contact early on. But by and large, the racing has been fantastic in this race. And David Russell has not had a win since Sandown late in 20. That's when he drove for Matthew White's team. I remember that race because he beat me by about five one hundredths of a second. Not that you're bitter or twisted about it, though. It was the closest finish that we've had in recent years in the Dunlop series, but this one's not quite as close. He's going to get off the final turn and break the drought and score the first race win for Dreamtime Racing in the Dunlop series. Flashes the lights, does it in style. And McLaughlin's home in second. That will give him pole for race three. But Ash Walsh, another great job, third in the Simpro Ford, but no shortage of action in the reverse grid race two. New lap record to McLaughlin. Russell collects 60 points and a chequered flag, but this was on the last lap. Morrison Blanchard, and Tim's having a shocker. He is. Just looked like he didn't give Morris enough room on the exit there of turn four, and uh, we can see the result. Scott by fourth, Boston. Fought his way back to fifth. Great job from Wood. Water seventh. Jones, Morris, and Medici rounded out the top ten in what was a pretty busy race, too. Jeff Emery in 11th for Greg Murphy Racing. Elliot Barber doing a good job. The rookie driving for the Broome Beasley Minda Motorsport team. Nick Perkat 
23rd. That hurts in that championship fight back. But Kylie's in the lane with our winner. Well, David, it's been a bit of a drought, but you've got there. <laughs> yeah, look, um, I'm very psyched after that race. It was, look, it was a best feeling I've had all, all this year, to be honest, crossing that line. And um, look, we held them out pretty well. Um, we sort of, um, yeah, our race strategy, we, we sort of knew what we needed to do. I didn't quite have the pace early, but I knew I'd be able to stack up at the end of, end of the race. So, you know, it was important to, to show I can still do it. I can still win races and pass and, and uh, handle the pressure. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a weight off the shoulders, I think, and uh, and get it, get the first win for the year. I, yeah, I'm very excited and um, hopefully we can bring on a few more and, uh, and not in a reverse grid race. The big talking point, though, was the clash between this man, Chaz Bolstad, and Nick Perkat, Chaz was able to push his way back through the order. Perkat explaining the situation to his engineer, Matty Crawford. Let's have a look at the contact again. Turn five, Nick ended up with a pit lane penalty. He's got his nose in there. There's the contact, and around goes the forward. Well, Chaz, when there is a move like that made on you, it must be frustrating. Yeah, it's obviously frustrating when, you know, um, obviously Nick's got a bit of pressure on him this year, trying to come off a Bathurst win and stuff like that. But, um, you know, just obviously people just need to try and cool down a bit. And, you know, you're only going to disadvantage yourself in championship points if you take other people out and you have to pit. So as soon as he realises that, um, obviously it'll be good to race with. But until then, oh well. Stick with us after the break. It's the decider, race three from Queensland Raceway. Yeah. 